through those very quickly. Human organ donation and transplantation. Uh, we were challenged with this with our colleagues uh, in China, about the involvement in this were, were physicians involved in the harvesting of organs from prisoners? Uh, can you have an informed consent from a prisoner? Uh, that's very doubtful. Uh, where do we stand with all of those sort of things? We have a very clear uh, stand that physicians are not to be involved in those sort of situations. And we're very supportive of getting our Chinese colleagues out of that sort of situation. <coughs> Access to health care, uh, statement on adolescent suicide, injury control, obesity, the pandemics. We did, uh, we have a number of policies on that. Alcohol and road safety. I know that uh, alcohol is an area that you have been looking at as well. It's one that we are very concerned about as to how it's evolving uh, right now with the WHO. Road safety is another one. Uh, telemedicine, tobacco control, and we'd be only very, only too happy to work very closely with you and learn from you. Uh, with regards to your efforts on tobacco control as well. We're talking about advocacy, we're talking about human rights, uh, torture, access to care, female genital mutilation, transplantation, human resources for health, what we're going to be talking about really briefly, task shifting, scope of practice, uh, migration and recruitment, Public health, the infectious diseases, the non-communicable diseases, tobacco, environment. Who are our partners? Our partners are the other health organizations, UN, international organization, of which you are a very important part, uh, NGOs, governments, industry. Uh, there's a number of training courses that have been run by the World Medical Association around uh, multiple drug, drug resistant TB, prison medicine, are the big ones. Interven individual interventions, unfortunately, uh, I would, as the president, would sign a letter, uh, a couple of letters a month to various, in various countries where physicians or patients uh, help human rights are being obviously abused and we see it as our role to speak out about that sort of thing. Uh, when it's well documented and we're sure that that's going on, then uh, we do speak out about it both publicly as well as to the governments. Advice and collaboration uh, the tobacco control area. Uh, we and several sections of that are called upon by the WHO to give medical advice on that and a variety of conferences. Service and outreach, looking at uh, caring physicians of the world, uh, celebrating uh, the tradition of ethics, caring, and science, uh, and coordinating celebration of that, as well as leadership programs uh, in order to build upon that. One of the areas of interest uh, personally is resilience in medicine. Why is it that some physicians or some students uh, thrive in situations where others uh, find it intolerable and cannot? What can we learn from the physicians or students who thrive to help those who do not in situations that are very difficult. And we hope to get some projects up and going on that. And my experience has been that in Canada, uh, that a lot of this work is already going on by the students there, and in some ways have been the drivers of a lot of physician health and well-being uh, initiatives within, uh, within Canada. And I applaud uh, the efforts of the students in that. Because resilience means sustained medical health, and which means uh, physicians who will practice longer and therefore end up having better health care for the population as well. They're happier, uh, work longer, and ultimately it benefits uh, the population.
population as well. We have some training courses, and I think this may be interest, uh, of interest to some of you because uh, they're online uh, as well as in print. Uh, medical ethics, prison medicine, uh, multiple drug resistant TB, uh, on print CD and online, and a TB refresher course, which is a new one, and that's why it's not online yet. We hope to get it online soon. Uh, but the TB refresher course isn't for people like you. It's for people like me and, and, and my age group or, uh, or older because what we found was one of the things when it came to treatment of TB was that as the incidence of TB has gone up because of a variety of factors, <coughs> drug resistance and AIDS, etc., as you all know, then the, the number of cases went up Physicians were seeing more of them, and many physicians, their knowledge base was 10, 15, 20 years old and had not kept up the knowledge base on the treatment regimes, and therefore, one of the reasons that we were seeing multiple drug resistant TB was because of us, the physicians, were not well enough educated uh, in many instances if they had been out of school for a length of time. So that's one of the areas that um, has, has been very well accepted and uh, we're pushing very hard. Number of conferences, uh, these are just a few, tax shifting, climate change. Okay, on to the topic of the day. WMA policy on health workforce issues. There's a number of areas of policy around this. Um, and basically, the major ones are the ethical guidelines for international recruitment of physicians, similar to the code that Andre had uh, mentioned to you. Uh, resolutions, a number of resolutions on the medical workforce. And a statement on task shifting. And I'll get into tax shifting at the end of the talk because I think it's an extremely important area of uh, migration and of workforce. So, the ethical guidelines uh, for our international recruitment of physicians is the, an area that has been of interest uh, to the WMA for some period of time now. It was implemented as a policy roughly 10 years ago, and there are a number of elements around it. First of all, one, and these are the elements, one is utilizing demographic data to make projections about the future requirements for physicians. What we have found time and again is that we have a cyclical or up and down pattern of physician supply in many countries because they don't do their homework. They don't look at the demographics of the physician supply now, how many, how old, how much they work, uh, and just as you had seen in some of the uh, Andre's numbers, the numbers of some of these physicians go up doesn't mean the productivity or the number of patients seen or treated goes up. So it's important within individual countries to say how many have you got, how much are they doing, and project how much you need. Because oftentimes in many countries, there's a reflex saying, well, we've got too many doctors and we come back, and, and then you're into a shortage, or they oversupply them by uh, educating too many. I know in Canada, in the early 1990s, there was a report came out that said there was going to be too many physicians in Canada, and they cut medical schools back by 10%, all of them across the country. We now have a shortage. So